and making these people take their businesses a little bit more seriously. So the more that you can be involved in lifting these people up, giving them a little bit of attention and help and advice, the better informed they're going to be when they start making things. So the third point I want to drive home tonight is the fact that the DIY community has really gone out of its way to, pay, to make people pay attention to the skill behind the work that you guys do. Now, I think girls like this and the crafters in general, they might get a little made fun of. They might be marginalized. They're a little kooky. They're a little crafty. But people like this have really done a lot to draw attention to how good you guys are at what you do. And I want to outline some of the things that I think are really positive about this community. The first one is that we renew people's love of the production process. And I think that that's incredibly crucial for making them understand what you do, how difficult it is, and sometimes some of the more difficult aspects of pricing and availability behind that. They've also drawn attention to the fact that traditional craft deserves to have a place in the high design community. It doesn't have to be left in the garage. It can be brought up and available in stores everywhere. And the third point is that people need to be considering found materials. I think that in Portland in particular, it's a city where people are actually paying attention to that and they're looking at what they can find around them and how to make that part of their work. But the DIY community in particular is, is especially fond of this method of production. And they are trying to work almost exclusively with things that they can find around them for free, things that exist that are specific to their regional area, and things that are just available in abundance laying around. And it doesn't end there either. This community, out of sheer necessity, is demanding less expensive and more efficient production methods. And this benefits the community as a whole. If there are more sites like Panoco and more sites like Shapeway out there to help people who don't have the access to things like you do, it helps the entire community. And it's going to help people that maybe you didn't even know would have been fantastic designers if they had just had those resources. So the more that this group demands access to production methods, the more that we all benefit from that. And I think the point that's really important to me is that DIYers are creating a more educated consumer. And I deal with this on Design Sponge every day. I can't tell you how many comments I get on a daily basis where someone complains that their four-year-old could have made that or that it's way too expensive and what's going on with that. And my mission is to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. And the way that I can do that is by showing them how difficult it is to do what you do. So the DIYers are paying attention to, here's some projects. Why don't you try your hand at making some of the things that other people do? So I think that it might be a little controversial for us to suggest that people try doing what you do, but nothing is better to show them how hard it is to do what you do so well. And they also have a better understanding of why things might cost a little bit more money when they try to do it with their own two hands. So I think rather than being intimidated or scared by the fact that people are trying to do things that are so similar to what you do, you should see it as a wonderful thing because these people are going to realize how difficult and how skilled that sort of act is. And I think something that we should talk about a little bit is the failures of the DIY community. Sure, we have problems like copying and we have problems you know, with people sort of you know, leading off of other people's work. But these failures are probably the best signal for professional designers of where your work and where your help is needed the most. I thought I'd share some examples of what I thought were failures of the community today. And if you've never been to the website Regretsy, as soon as this is over, open up your phone and enjoy. Just grab a bag of chips and enjoy the freak show because it's pretty hilarious. So these are some products that I thought would be good examples of common failures you see in the DIY community. This is an outfit made out of an Ikea bag. These are some super stylish Converse that have been customized. This is this a typical A carton, not the you know nice cardboard kind, the styrofoam kind that's being sold for $5 as a jewelry organizer. My personal favorite, a piece symbol made from the top part of a lamp. <laughs> and if you really love Doritos, you can now carry them as a purse for only $10. Now, what can we learn from these failures? And there are lots of them online, and they can be really funny. But the point is, they offer you guys an insight into what the market needs. Now, these particular examples, if you look at them, everyone's working with the things they found around them. And this is something I've said a lot tonight. But people really want to see you guys working with found materials, things that are thrown away, things that can be recycled. It's a desire that's palpable in this community. They want you to work with stuff that's left over. And they're trying to do it themselves, and they're not doing a very good job of it. So that's a place where you, your skills are needed. And all of these gaps and holes in the community where we're not doing things well, those struggles are the signs for you guys to step in and do it better than we do it. And I think that another way to find this is to, if you pay attention to sites like Coral Flow or sites like Etsy, or even some of the bigger design blogs, 
what you'll see is that sometimes people reintroduce products over and over on Etsy with slight changes. And a lot of times these changes are based on suggestions that people on websites have made. And it's the perfect example that crowdsourcing can be great and really helpful, but it does not replace the type of professional research that you have to do, the research into ergonomics and into all of the different problems people are going to face. Nobody's doing that on Etsy. And so we just keep redesigning things and trying to fix it a little bit better every time. And it's like your dad in the garage with a hammer. And you know, it's never going to be perfect, but you guys can make it perfect. And if you look at these gaps and these holes and look at the trends and look at what people are trying to do, that's where we're struggling and that's where we need expertise and that's where you guys should be stepping in. Now, the last thing is something that I think is sort of the core of what I'm trying to tell you guys tonight, which is these three groups, you know, the, the girls with the glasses, the crafters, the really serious people, they're, they're, all, they're all trying to, you know, make things and, and be a part of the community that creates things that solve problems. And they're not so different. And if they would just work together as a team and communicate a little bit more, their production processes could be, could be sped up. Things could be more efficient. We could create better products just if we start talking together. And I think that this is probably the most inspirational quote I got in the research that I did for this speech, which is from Bart Haney at Fuchs Project in New York. And we talked for a long time, and Bart said, you know, I think maybe the future of DIY isn't really do it yourself, but doing it together. And these two teams need to be working together. We need to take off our silly glasses, and we need to talk to each other, and we need to realize that each group has something to teach the other one. DIYers are responsible for half of this. DIYers need to share the problems we're having. I think a lot of times DIYers are a little bit intimidated by you guys and think that you're not going to take us seriously. But if we share the problems we're having, you guys can step in and help us, or you can solve them for us because you guys have the expertise. We're demanding new methods of production, and these sorts of methods are things that benefit the whole group. But we need to communicate about what the problems we're having and sort of the holes that we need in production processes. And DIYers have endless amounts of ideas. These are people who are talking online 24 hours a day about crazy ideas they have for producing things and reusing materials around them. And the best part about this is, these are your new interns. These are your new employees. These are the people who are eventually going to end up working with you. And this is a completely different type of worker. This is not someone who's secretive. This is a community that's incredibly open-minded. They're willing to share. And when you bring them into your world, you don't just bring them. You bring the thousands of people they talk to on a regular basis online. They're an infinite network of ideas, and they're happy to share them with you. Now, professional designers have a responsibility in this, too. And I think as someone who's involved in the other half of the community, I see a very unique future for you guys. I think that you are going to become the curators of the design community. There's a need for someone with expertise. There's a need for someone who can make decisions that we can't make. And that's where you guys come in. DIYers are going to have great ideas, but they're not going to replace you. There needs to be someone who leads this group of people into the right direction and pushes them to do better. Because greater communication is what we need for better products. And at the end of the day, whether you're sitting in a room with a knitting needle trying to sew something, or you're sitting in a studio at IDEO trying to produce something at an incredibly high level, everyone's trying to solve a problem. And the more that we talk, the better able we are to solve those problems. So tonight I wanted to tell you five things. First, to reassure you that we're not trying to take your jobs, we're just trying to solve problems, and that we desperately need your help doing it. Secondly, that we have our problems, and we're aware of them, and we're trying to work on them. But overall, DIYers are trying to do good things, and so far they've done a great job of adding to the community. Third, we're really helping the consumers as a whole. We're trying to educate them about what we're doing, and how hard it is to do things as well as you guys do them. And that, yes, we have failures, and we're trying to push past them. But if you pay attention to our failures, you're going to see where we need you and where we need expertise. And lastly, we all need to be working together more. There shouldn't be this design, there shouldn't be this, there shouldn't be this divide, there shouldn't be a stereotyping about who's a crafter and who's a professional designer. Everyone wants to make and everyone wants to create. If we could just work together, things would be so much better. So I'm really excited to see what happens when these communities get together. Please, please be involved, be active, pay attention to what's happening online. There's so much raw talent and everyone's waiting for you to be involved because DIYers have the passion but we don't have the expertise that you have and we're desperately looking for your input. So please be involved, talk to us and participate because everyone's excited to